Hare Krishna, everyone. Welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books. Yesterday was Gaur Purnima, and we had an, ex an excerpt read from the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which was very, very nice. But, Sh you know, Sh Lord Chaitanya came to give us the Srimad Bhagavatam, and he preached from it extensively. So here we are, back to the Bhagavatam, by the grace of Lord Chaitanya. Um, but first, let's hear Sanatana Goswami's prayer to the Srimad Bhagavatam, full of enriched, deep realizations of what the Srimad Bhagavatam is, to help us uh, go deeper. Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram. And it goes like this. Sarva Shastra Dipudhi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures Singular fruit of all the Vedas Rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths You are the only giver of sight to all the worlds Sarva Bhagavata Prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabho Kalidvan Dodita Ditya Sri Krishna Parivartita O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees O Master Srimad Bhagavatam You are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali You are the exact image of Sri Krishna Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshakshadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you who were supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna himself. Marekabando Matsangin Madguru Man Mahadana Manistadagamad Bhagya Mat Ananda Namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadu tadayin atini chuchatakana hanamun chagadachin mam prem narit kantayos buddha. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So, we've reached the 30th chapter of the 4th canto. We're beginning with text 21. The activities of, of the Prachetas are being described. The great sage Maitreya said, after the Personality of Godhead spoke thus, the Prachetas began to offer him prayers. Now you remember what he said? He was specifically glorifying them or, or appreciating their cooperative spirit, how they were together following the instructions of their father, and, uh, and it pleased the Lord very much. The Lord is the bestower of all success in life and is the supreme benefactor. He is also the supreme friend who takes away all miserable conditions experienced by a devotee. In a faltering vo voice, due to ecstasy, the prachetas began to offer prayers. They were purified by the presence of the Lord who was before them face to face. Purport. The Lord is herein described <clears throat> as Purusharta Bhajanam, the bestower of the ultimate goal of life. Whatever success we want in life, we can attain by the mercy of the Lord. 
Since the Prachetas had already attained the Lord's mercy, they were no longer subject to the contamination of the material modes. The material modes dissipated from them just as the darkness of night immediately dissipates when the sun rises. Because the Lord appeared before them, naturally, all the contaminations of the material qualities of rajas and tamas completely disappeared. <clears throat> Similarly, when an unalloyed devotee chants the Hare Krishna Ma Mantra, he is also purified of all material contamination because the name of the Lord and the Lord are identical. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.17 Shrinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtanaha Ridyantaksto Yabhadrani Virunoti Surat Surit Satam Sri Krishna, the Personality of Godhead, who is the Paramatma, Super Soul in everyone's heart, and the benefactor of the truthful devotee, cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. The holy name of the Lord is the Lord Himself. If one chants and hears, he becomes purified. Gradually, all material contamination <clears throat> disappears. The prachetas were already purified due to the Lord's presence before them, and they could therefore offer the proper prayers with folded hands. In other words, as soon as devotees are engaged in devotional service, they become transcendental to all material contamination immediately. As confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Sagunan Samatityaitan Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpate. Sometimes the devotees are dissatisfied due to their not seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead personally. When the Prachetas saw the Supreme Lord personally present, their unhappiness vanished. Text 22 The Prachetas spoke as follows. Dear Lord, you relieve all kinds of material distress. Your magnanimous transcendental qualities and holy name are all auspicious. This conclusion is already settled. You can go faster than the speed of mind and words. You cannot be perceived by material senses. We therefore offer you respectful obeisances again and again. Purport. The word nirupita, meaning concluded, is very significant in this verse. No one has to conduct research work to find God or make progress in spiritual knowledge. Everything is conclusively there in the Vedas. Therefore, the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita 15.15, Vidaish chasarvaya aham eva vedyaha Understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead through the process of the Vedas is perfect and conclusive. The Vedas state, Atak Shri Krishna Nabadi Nabaved Grayam Indriyahi The transcendental names, <coughs> forms, qualities, paraphernalia and pastimes of the Lord cannot be understood by our blunt material senses. Sevan Mukhe Hijivado Swayameva Spuratyadaha <clears throat> when a devotee engages his senses favorably in devotional service, the Lord, through his causeless mercy, reveals himself to the devotee. This is the conclusive Vedic process. <clears throat> the Vedas also indicate that simply by chanting the holy names of the Lord, one can, without a doubt, become spiritually advanced. We cannot approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead by the speed of mind or words, but if we stick to devotional service, we can easily and quickly approach Him. In other words, the Supreme Lord is attracted by devotional service and He can approach us more swiftly than we can approach Him with our mental speculation. The Lord has stated that He is beyond the range of mental speculation. The Lord has stated 
that he is beyond the ma- range of mental speculation and the speed of thought. Yet, he can be approached easily by his causeless mercy. Thus, only by his causeless mercy can he be attained. Other methods will not be effective. Text 23 Dear Lord, we, we beg to offer our obeisances unto you. When the mind is fixed upon you, the world of duality, although a place for material enjoyment, appears meaningless. Your transcendental form is full of transcendental bliss. We therefore offer our respects unto you. Your appearances as Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu and Lord Shiva are meant for the purpose of creating, maintaining and annihilating this cosmic manifestation. Purport. A pure devotee whose mind is always engaged in the service of the Lord can certainly appreciate the impermanence of this material world. Although such a devotee may be engaged in executing material activities, this stage is called anasakti. As explained by Srila Rupa Goswami, anasaktasya vishayan yatarham upayunjataha. A devotee is always unattached to material activities because in the liberated stage, his mind is always fixed on the lotus feet of the Lord. This material world is called Dvaita, the world of duality. A devotee knows very well that everything within this material world is but a manifestation of the Supreme Lord's energy. To maintain the three modes of material nature, the Supreme Lord takes on different forms as Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu, and Lord Shiva. Unaffected by the modes of material nature, the Lord takes on different forms to create, maintain, and annihilate this cosmic <clears throat> manifestation. The conclusion is that although the pure devotee appears to engage in <clears throat> material activities in the service of the Lord, he knows very well that material enjoyment for sense gratification has no use whatsoever. Text 24 <clears throat> Dear Lord, we offer our res- respectful obeisances unto you because your existence is completely independent of all material influences. Your Lordship always takes away the devotee's miserable conditions, for your brain plans how to do so. Oh, let's hear that one again. Hare Krishna. No objections? No objection certificate, I guess. <clears throat> your Lordship always takes away the devotee's miserable condition, conditions for your brain plans how to do so. That means he's always thinking about how to remove our material miserable conditions. That's what I... <clears throat> you live everywhere as Paramatma. Therefore you are known as Vasudeva. You also accept Vasudeva as your father and you were celebrated by the name Krishna. You are so kind that you always increase the influence of all kinds of devotees. Purport In the previous verse, it has been said, Grihita Maya Gunavigrahaya, that the Lord accepts three kinds of bodies, Vishnu, Brahma, and Shiva, for the purposes of creating, maintaining, and annihilating the cosmic manifestation. The three predominating deities of the material universe, material universe, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, are called Guna Avataras. There are many kinds of incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The first incarnations within this material world are Brahma, Vishnu, and Maheshwara, Shiva. Out of these three, Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva accept material bodies, but Lord Vishnu does not accept a material body. Lord Vishnu is therefore known as Bishuddha Sattva. His existence is completely free from the contamination of the material modes of nature. One should therefore not think that Lord Vishnu is in the same category with Lord Brahma and Shiva. The Shastras forbid us to think in this way.
and just did the same same thing and went down a few pages by mistake. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> yes to Narayanam Devam Brahma Rudra Didai Vatahi Samat me na bhikshi Samat me naiva bhikshita Sapashandi Bhavet Dravam One who considers Lord Vishnu to be in the same category with Devas like Lord Brahma or Lord Shiva or who thinks Lord Brahma and Shiva to be equal to Lord Vishnu is to be considered a Pashandi, a faithless non-believer. Therefore in this verse <clears throat> Lord Vishnu is distinguished in, in the words Namo Bishuddha Satvaya. Although a living entity like us, Lord Brahma, is exalted due to his pious activities, therefore he is given the high post of Brahma. Lord Shiva is not actually like a living entity, but he is not the Supreme Personality of Godhead. His position is somewhere between Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and Brahma, the living entity. Lord Shiva is therefore explained in Brahma Samhita in this way, 545. Chidam yatat dadati vikadi vishe toho yak shambhutam apitata samupaiti karyad govinda mari purusham tamaham bhajami Lord Shiva is considered to be like yogurt, dadi. Yogurt is nothing but transformed milk. Nonetheless, yogurt cannot be accepted as milk. Similarly, Lord Shiva holds almost all the powers of Lord Vishnu, and he is also above the qualities of the living entity. But he is not exactly like Vishnu, just as yogurt, although transformed milk, is not exactly like milk. The Supreme Personality of Godhead <clears throat> is also described herein as Vasudevaya Krishnaya. Krishna is originally is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead. Then all Vishnu expansions are his plenary portions or portions of his plenary portions known as Shwangsa and Kala. The Shwangsa or direct expansion is also called Anksha. All Vishnu tattvas are Swangsha, direct parts and parcels of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Krishna is known as Vasudeva because he appeared in this material world as the son of Vasudeva. Similarly, he is known as Deviki Nandana, Yashoda Nandana, Nanda Nandana, and so on. Again and again, the Lord is very much interested in increasing the influence of His devotees. Therefore, He is described herein as Prabhave Sarva Satvatam. The Satvata community is the, a community of Vaishnavas, pure devotees of the Lord. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has unlimited powers, and He wants to see that His devotees are also entrusted with unlimited powers. A devotee of the Lord is, all, is always therefore distinguished from all other living entities. The word Hari means one who takes away all miserable conditions and Hari Medase means that the Lord is always planning ways to deliver the conditioned soul from the clutches of Maya. The Lord is so kind that He personally incarnates to deliver the conditioned souls and whenever he comes, he makes his plans. Paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya chaduskritam dharma sangstapanartaya sambhavami yuge yuge To deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to reestablish the principles of religion, I admit myself millennium after millennium. Bhagavad Gita 4.8 since the Lord delivers all conditioned souls from the clutches of Maya, He is known as Hari Medas. In the list of incarnations, Krishna is described as the supreme and original personality of Godhead. Ete Changsha Kalapungsa Krishnas Tu Bhagavan Swayam Indrari Vyakulam Lokam Mridiyanti Yuge Yuge Krishna the original personality of Godhead 
appears in this material world when the demigods, who are devotees of the Lord, are disturbed by the demons. Text 25 Dear Lord, we offer our respectful obeisances unto you, because from, because from your abdomen sprouts the lotus flower, the origin of all living entities. You are always decorated with a lotus garland, and your feet resemble the lotus flower with all its fragrance. Your eyes are also like petals of a lotus flower. Therefore, we always offer our respectful obeisances unto you. Purport. The word Kamala Nabhaya indicates that Lord Vishnu is the origin of the material creation. From the abdomen, abdomen of Garbhuta Kashai Vishnu, a lotus flower sprouts. Lord Brahma, the first creature in the, of the universe, is born from this lotus flower, and subsequently Lord Brahma creates the whole universe. The origin of all creation is therefore Lord Vishnu, and the origin of all the Vishnu tattvas is Lord Krishna. Consequently, Krishna is the origin of everything. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 10.8. Aham sarvasya prabhavo matak sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante mam buddha bhava saman I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know perfectly, who perfectly know this, engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. Lord Krishna says, I am the origin of everything. Therefore, whatever we see emanates from Him. This is also confirmed in the Vedanta Sutra, Janmad Yasya Yataha. The Absolute Truth is He from whom everything emanates. Text 26 Dear Lord, the garment you have put on is yellowish in color, like the saffron of a lotus flower, but it is not made of anything material. Since you live in everyone's heart, you are the direct witness of all activities, all the activities of all living entities. We offer our respectful obeisances unto you again and again. Purport. In this verse, <clears throat> the dress of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and his all-pervasive nature are described. The Lord puts on a dress that is yellow, but such a garment is never to be considered material. The garments of the Lord are also the Lord. They are not different from the Lord because they are spiritual in nature. The Lord, the word Sarva Bhuta Nivasaya further clarifies how Lord Vishnu lives in everyone's heart and acts as the direct witness of all the activities of the conditioned soul. Within this material world, the conditioned soul has desires and acts in accordance with these desires. All these acts are, are observed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 1515. Sarvasya chaham riti sanavishto matak smritir jnana apohanam cha I am seated in everyone's heart, and from me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. The Lord is present in everyone's heart, and He gives the living entity intelligence. According to the desires of a living entity, the Lord makes him remember or forget. If the living entity is demoniac and wants to forget the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Lord gives him the intelligence to be able to forget the Supreme Lord forever. Similarly, when a devotee wants to serve the Supreme Lord, the Lord as Paramatma gives the devotee the intelligence to make progress in devotional service. The Lord directly witnesses our activities and experiences our desires. The Supreme Lord gives us the facilities to act in the way we wish. Care for what you wish for. Text 27 <clears throat> Dear Lord, we conditioned souls are always covered by ignorance in the bodily conception of life. We therefore 
always prefer the miserable conditions of material existence. To deliver us from these material conditions, you have advented yourself in this transcendental form. This is evidence of your unlimited, causeless mercy upon those of us who are suffering in this way. What then to speak of the devotees to whom you are, o you always, you are always so favorably disposed? Purport. When the Lord appears in his original form, he acts to deliver the pious and annihilate the miscreants. Bhagavad Gita 4.8 <clears throat> Although he annihilates the demons, he no nonetheless benefits them. It is said that all the living entities who died on the battlefield of Kurukshetra attained their original constitutional position, Surupa, because they had the chance to see Krishna face to face, riding in the chariot of Arjuna. On the battlefield of Kurukshetra, superficially, two things were going on. The demons were being killed, and the devotee, Arjuna, was being protected. However, the results were the same for everyone. Thus it is said that the appearance of the Lord diminishes all kinds of miserable conditions caused by material existence. It is clearly stated in this verse that this form, Ashesha Klesha Sankshayam, is meant to diminish all the miserable conditions experienced in life, not only by the devotees, but by all others. Avishkritam nat klishtanam. The prachetas identified themselves as common men. Kim adyat anukampitam. The devotees are always favorably accepted by the Lord. The Lord shows all mercy not only to conditioned souls, but also to the devotees who are already liberated due to their devotional service. The form, of, the form of the Lord is, as worshipped in the temples is called Archavigraha or Archavatara, the worshipable form, the deity, incarnation. This facility is offered to neophyte devotees so that they can see the real form of the Lord face to face and offer their respectful obeisances and sacrifices in the form of Archa. Through such facilities, the neophyte devotees invoke their original <coughs> Krishna consciousness. Deity worship in the form of temple worship is the most viable benediction given by the Lord to beginners. All neophytes must therefore engage in the worship of the Lord by keeping the archa vigraha, archa vitara, at home or in the temple. Text 28 Dear Lord, you are the killer of all inauspicious things. You are compassionate upon your pure, poor devotees through the expansion of your archa vigraha. You should certainly think of us as your eternal servants. Purport The form of the Lord known as archa vigraha is an expansion of his unlimited potencies. When the Lord is gradually satisfied with the service of a devotee, in due course of time, he accepts the devotee as one of his many unalloyed servants. By nature, the Lord is very compassionate. Therefore, the service of the neophyte devotees is accepted by the Lord. As confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 926, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam Yome Bhaktya Prayachtiti Tadaham Bhaktuparitam Ashnami Prayatatmanaha If one offers me with love and devotion, a leaf, a flower, fruit, or water, I will accept it. The devotee offers eatables in the form of vegetables, fruits, leaves, and water to the archavigraha. The Lord, being bhaktavatsala, compassionate upon his devotees, accepts these offerings. Atheists may think that the devotees are engaged in idol worship, but the fact is different. Janardana, the Supreme Lord accepts bhava, the attitude of service. The neophyte devotee engaged in the worship of the Lord may not understand the value of such worship, but the Supreme Lord, being Bhaktivatsala, accepts his devotee and in due course of time takes him home. In this connection, 
There is a story about a Brahmana who was offering sweet rice to the Lord within his mind. The Brahmana had no money nor any means of worshipping the deity, but within his mind he arranged everything nicely. He had gold pots to bring water from the sacred rivers to wash the deity, and he offered the deity very sumptuous food, including sweet rice. Once before he offered the sweet rice, he thought it was too hot, and he thought, oh, let me test it. My, it is very hot. When he put his finger in the sweet rice to test it, his, his finger was burned and his meditation broke. Although he was offering food to the Lord within his mind, the Lord accepted it nonetheless. Consequently, the Lord in Vaikuntha immediately sent a chariot to bring, to bring the Brahmana back home, back to Godhead. Thus it is the duty of every sincere devotee to accept the archa vigraha at home or in the temple and worship the form of the Lord as advised in authorized scriptures and directed by the spiritual master. Text 29 When the Lord out of his natural compassion thinks of his devotee, by that process only are the desires of the neophyte devotee fulfilled. The Lord is situated in every living entity's heart, although the living entity may be very insignificant. The Lord knows everything about the living entity, including all his desires. Although we are very insignificant, we should know the Lord not we should we should why should the Lord sorry why should the Lord not know our desires? Purport. A very advanced devotee does not think himself advanced. He, always, he is always very humble. The Supreme Personality of Godhead in His plenary expansion as the Paramatma or Super Soul sits in everyone's heart and can understand the attitudes and desires of His devotees. The Lord also gives opportunity to the non-devotees to fulfill their desires as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Matak, Smritir, Jnanam, Apoanam, Cha. Whatever a living entity desires, however insignificant he may be, is noted by the Lord, who gives him a chance to fulfill his desires. If the desires of a non-devotee are fulfilled, why not those of the devotee? A pure devotee simply wants to engage in the service of, this, of the Lord without material desire. And if he wants this within the core of his heart, where the Lord is situated, and if he is without ulterior motive, why should the Lord not understand? If a sincere devotee renders service to the Lord or to the Archavigraha, the form of the Lord, all his activities prove successful because the Lord is present within his heart and understands his sincerity. Thus, if a devotee with all confidence goes on discharging the prescribed duties of devotional service, he will ultimately attain success. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah. Text 30. O Lord of the Universe, You are the actual teacher of the science of devotional service. We are satisfied that Your Lordship is the ultimate goal of our lives and we pray that You will be satisfied with us. That is our benediction. We do not desire anything other than your full satisfaction. Purport. In this verse, the words apavarga gurur gati are very significant. According to Srimad Bhagavatam 1 2 11, the Lord is the ultimate fact of the absolute truth. Brahmiti paramatmiti bhagavan iti shabhyate. The absolute truth is realized in three features impersonal Brahman, localized Paramatma, and ultimately the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan. The word Apavarga means liberation. Pavarga means material existence. In material existence, one always works very hard, but is ultimately baffled. One then dies and has to accept another body to work very hard again. This is the cycle of material existence. Apavarga 
means just the opposite. Instead of working hard like cats and dogs, one returns home back to Godhead. Liberation begins with merging into the Brahman effulgence of the Supreme Lord. This conception is held by the Jnani Sampradaya, philosophical speculators. But realization of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is higher. When a devotee understands that the Lord is satisfied, liberation or merging into the effulgence of the Lord is not very difficult. One has to approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead through the impersonal Brahman effulgence, just as one has to approach the sun through the sunshine. It is not very difficult to merge into the impersonal effulgence of the Lord Brahman if one has satisfied the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 31. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we shall therefore pray for your benediction because you are the supreme beyond all transcendence and because there is no end to your opulences. Consequently, you are celebrated by the name Ananta. <clears throat> Purport. There was no need for the Prachetas to ask any benediction from the Supreme Lord because the devotee <laughs> just as, sorry I had to turn down my volume Sorry. Ari Bonita. patience. It's an important message. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we shall therefore pray for your benediction because you are the supreme beyond all transcendence and because there is no end to your opulences. Consequently, you are celebrated by the name Ananta. Purport. <clears throat> there was no need for the Prachetas to ask any benediction from the Supreme Lord because the devotees are simply satisfied by the presence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Dhruva Maharaj practiced severe austerities and penances to see the Supreme Lord and his intention was to receive benediction from the Lord. He wanted to acquire the throne of his father or attain an even better position but when he was actually in the presence of the Supreme Lord, he forgot everything. He said, My dear Lord, I do not wish to ask any benediction. This is the actual position of the devotee. The devotee simply wants to be in the presence of the Supreme Lord, either in this world or in the next, and engage in his, in his service. That is the ultimate goal and benediction for the devotees. The Lord asked the Prachetas to pray for some benediction, and they said, What kind of benediction should we pray for? The Lord is unlimited, and there are unlimited benedictions. The purport is that if one must ask for benediction, he must ask for unlimited benediction. <laughs> the words tat paratat are very significant in this verse. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is paratak padat. The word para means transcendental, beyond this material world. The, the impersonal brahmanifulgence is beyond this material world. 
and this is called Param Padam. Aru Yakrich Trena Padam Padam. Bhagavatam 10, 232. Merging into the impersonal effulgence of the Lord is called Param Padam. But there is a higher transcendental position, which is the association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Brahmiti Paramatmiti. Bhagavan Iti Shabyate. Bhagavatam 1 to 11. The absolute truth is realized <clears throat> first as impersonal Brahman, <clears throat> then as Paramatma, and finally as Bhagavan. Thus the personality of Godhead, Bhagavan, is Paratak Parat, beyond Brahman and Paramatma, realization. In this connection, Srila Jiva Goswami points out <clears throat> that Paratak Parat means better than the best. The best is the spiritual world and it is known as Brahman. <clears throat> the Supreme Personality of God, however, is known as Parabrahman. Therefore, Paratak Parat means better than Brahman realization. It will be explained in the next verses, the Prachetas, as will be explained in the next verses, the Prachetas planned to ask the Lord for something that has no limit. There is no limit to his name, forms, pastimes, creation, and paraphernalia. The living entity cannot conceive of the unlimitedness of the unlimited. However, if living entities are engaged in hearing about the unlimited potencies of the Supreme Lord, they are factually connected directly to the unlimited. Such understanding of the unlimited becomes unlimited by hearing and chanting. Text 32. <clears throat> Dear Lord, when the bee approaches the celestial tree called the Parijata, it certainly does not leave the tree because there is no need for such action. Similarly, when we have approached your lotus feet and taken shelter of them, what further benediction may we ask of you? Purport. <clears throat> when a devotee is actually engaged in the service of a lotus feet of a Lord, his engagement in itself is so perfect that there is no need to ask for further benediction. When a bee approaches the Parijata tree, it gets unlimited supplies of honey. There is, no need, there is no need to go to another tree. If one is fixed in the service of the lotus feet of the Lord, <clears throat> there is unlimited transcendental bliss. And as such, there is no need to ask for further benediction. <clears throat> the Parijata tree is not commonly found within this material world. The Parijata tree is also known as Kalpavriksha, or the wish-fulfilling tree. <clears throat> One can get anything he desires from such a tree. <clears throat> In the material world, one can get oranges from an orange tree or mangoes from a mango tree, <clears throat> but there is no possibility of getting oranges from a mango tree or vice versa. However, one can get whatever he wants from the Parijata tree, oranges, mangoes, bananas, and so forth and so on. This tree is found in the spiritual world. Chintamani prakata sattma sukalpa briksha lakshavriteshu. The spiritual world, Chintamani Dham, is surrounded by these kalpa briksha trees. But the Parijata tree is also found in the kingdom of Indra, that is, on Indra's heavenly planet. This Parijata tree was brought by Krishna to please Satyabhama, one of his queens. And this tree was implanted in the De Dwarka mansions constructed for the queens. The lotus feet of the Lord are exactly like the Parijata trees or wish-fulfilling trees and the devotees are like bumblebees. Or like what? Bumblebees. Really? <laughs> they are always attracted by the lotus feet of the Lord. Text 33 Dear Lord, 
As long as we have to remain within this material world due to our material contamination and wander from one type of body to another and from one planet to another, we pray that we may associate with those who are engaged in discussing your pastimes. We pray for this benediction. All right already, all right already. You know, it's, it's like symbolic, you know. I'll, read, I'll start this again. This is such a nice verse. <coughs> as soon as Sri, whatever it is, passes. You must have prayed for this benediction at some point. <laughs> <coughs> Dear Lord, <coughs> as long as we have to remain within this material world due to our material contamination and wander from one type of body to another and from one planet to another, we pray that we may associate with those who are engaged in discussing your pastimes. We pray for this benediction, life after life, in different bodily forms and on different planets. <laughs> Prayer port. <clears throat> this is the best benediction that a devotee can ask of the Supreme Lord. This is also confirmed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Stane istita shudikatam tanuvan manobi. Bhagavatam 10, 14, 3. One may be in one position or another according to destiny. But in any case, one must continue to hear about the activities and pastimes of the Supreme Lord regardless of circumstances. A pure devotee does not pray for liberation or for cessation of the cycle of birth and death because he does not consider that important. The most important thing for a devotee is getting a chance to hear about the pastimes and glories of the Lord. The devotees who engage in the service of the Lord in this world will have the same opportunity in the spiritual world also. Thus, for a devotee, Everything is in the spiritual world. For as long as he can hear about the pastimes of the Lord, or wherever he can chant, or, or wherever he can chant, the Lord is personally present. Tatra tishtami narada yatra gayanti madbhakta. When the pure devotees assemble to chant here and talk about the supreme personality of Godhead, the place where they assemble becomes Vaikuntha. That's why they call this Radha Lane. Right? Isn't it? For the devotee, there is no need to pray to the Lord for transferal to the Vaikuntha world. A, devo a pure devotee can create Vaikuntha or Vrindavan anywhere simply by chanting the glories of the Lord without offense. The Prachetas pray for an opportunity to hear of the glories of the Lord in every form of life. Bhave, Bhave. A living entity transmigrates from one body to another. The devotee is not particularly eager to stop this process. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prays, Mama Janmani, Janmani Shwere, Babatad Bhaktir, Ahai Tuki, Twayi. My dear Lord, Life after life, may I be fixed in your pure devotional service. Out of humility, a devotee considers himself unfit to be transferred to the spiritual world. He always thinks himself contaminated by the modes of material nature. Nor is there any need for a devotee to ask to be freed from the modes of material nature. Devotional service itself is in the transcendental position. Therefore, there is no question of asking for this special facility. The conclusion is that a pure devotee is not anxious to stop the repetition of birth and death, but is always eager to associate with other devotees who are engaged in chanting and hearing about the glories of the Lord. <laughs> Text 34.
we'll stop there. Seven thirty. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. Okay. We have one of these new bumblebees just waiting for someone. Sarva, are you going to save me? You always have something to say, Sarva. I knew it. Can you explain? <coughs> heard, the, heard the word Apavarga in one of the purports. Mm. Apavarga. Mm. Yeah, this is mentioned, I think, in the first canto, but isn't there like a word very similar? Oh, how do you break down the word? Oh, how do you break down the word? You're going to test my memory. Can you break break it down for us? Pa va ga. Pa va apa va ga. Apa va ga. So, pa means work. Not just work. Pa ba means pa ba means foam comes out of the mouth. You know, I don't remember the exact details of every single syllable and what they all mean, but but the essence of it is that pavaga means uh, the material work which causes us to foam with the mouth and then die. And apavarga means to attain that state in which None of those things happen. So, uh, ah means without. Without working hard like a beast of burden with foam in the mouth. I'm getting a double thing here. I'm talking to two microphones. Okay. Another word for liberation. Apavarga. But it's but but you're right, sir. But there is a, there is a, ver a purport in the first canto where he, he breaks it down. Purport breaks it down, and there's more than there's two in between, and I can't remember what they are, the syllables. It's actually like Devanagari has uh, pa 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 pa. Yes, pa 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 pa. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Do you remember the details? Do you remember the details? Mm -hmm. Okay, who wants the research project? Shoba's just, and she's just aching for a research project. She, she's, no. She wants homework. You can tell she's just dying for some homework. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Hannah, you have something. Mm -hmm. I have a reflection and a question. Hmm. My reflection was, today we read Merging into the impersonal effulgence of the Lord is called Parampadam, but there is a higher transcendental position. This made me think of yesterday when we read in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that a dog can swim a few yards in the ocean and then, then he comes to the shore. Yeah. But a dog by the mercy of the Lord can cross the whole ocean. So it made me think of that. And then I had a question. We read um, in text 26, uh, Krishna says in that Bhagavad Gita, I am seated in everyone's heart, and from me come remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. The Lord is present in everyone's heart, and he gives the living entity intelligence. According to the desires of the living entity, the Lord makes him remember or forget. If the living entity is demoniac and wants to forget the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Lord gives him the intelligence to be able to forget the Supreme Lord forever. <laughs> Similarly, when a devotee wants to serve the Supreme Lord, 
The Lord as Paramatma gives the devotee the intelligence to make progress in devotional service. The Lord directly witnesses our activities and experiences our desires. The Supreme Lord gives us the facilities to act in the way we wish. So the first question that I wrote down was, how can we always wish to serve the Lord? And then I made a few side notes. I said, I ask because you once said that one can be in front of Krishna, in front of the deities, and still be in Maya. So do we pray to always desire the Lord at that point? And is this what it means to surrender? Well, <clears throat> um, you had three questions. Tell me what remind by remind me what the first one was. How can we always wish to serve the Lord? One time, a devotee asked Prabhupada, "How can we be enthusiastic?" You know what Prabhupada's answer was? To be, to be, be enthusiastic. <laughs> it's, it's not something that somebody else can do for you. And, and not that somebody else can desire for you what you ask. You desire. So how, how to desire is the desire. It's up to us. We've been given the uh, facility as an individual part and parcel sentient living being part of Krishna he's unlimitedly independent and we are limitedly independent we have minute infinitesimal independence so when we're under the influence of the material nature we lose that ability to be independent to the degree that we are covered by Maya. So the idea, and this is connected with another of your questions, when you're in front of the deities, then you know what you don't you don't need to desire anything in a sense because you're in front of the deity and that you're in front of Krishna, you're seeing Krishna, and therefore all the goals are already fulfilled. And what was the third one? There was a third one. <coughs> well, I said, you know, if somebody is in front of the deities and they just cannot, I think we also read this today, they, they cannot appreciate. That's called f fortune. <coughs> it's called fortune. Fortune means by the things that you've done before, we're for more or less fortunate. So if a person's in front of the deities and can't wish for anything, not that they're not wishing for anything because they're, they know they're in front of Krishna, but they're in front of Krishna and they can't see that it's Krishna. They can't, they got no idea. Sometimes they just come, you know, in front of the deities and just go like this and then walk out. There's no, you can see there's no real, it's just a ritual that they've learned from before, from their parents or from their forefathers, <clears throat> and it's just something that they do, a ritual, a, r a religious ritual, and they're not actually understanding. So the, the, we, have to, we have to understand. Therefore, you can't be in the temple room in front of the deities and be in Maya. It's possible. And it comes back to the same thing in the beginning, you know, we have that desire, so we, no one else can do that for us. But if the if the Prabhupada used to say that we are that we uh, we have a causeless unwillingness in the material world, we have a causeless unwillingness to serve. In the spiritual world, we have a causeless willingness to serve, and in the material world, we have a causeless unwillingness to serve. In other words, when you misuse your independence, you'll do something completely against your, you know, your actual well-being because you have that ability to choose. We used the example the other day that when they have these, in, in, in England now, you, in the cigarette packages, they have to have full bleed, 
you know, for, there's nothing, no room for any advertisement how nice it is. <laughs> it's it's got to have a full bleed advertisement of how it's going to kill you. And sometimes they even have graphic pictures of, you know, like gnarly, you know, cancer ridden, you know, mal something. I don't know. I haven't seen it myself. <clears throat> but I was just told. And yet they do it anyway. That's what happens when we misuse our intelligence. We can do anything against our own, uh, you know, benefit. And therefore, it says, "What does it say in the, in one of the things you read? Forever, if you want, you can forget the Lord forever, or as long as you don't want to remember it, <laughs> because He will not He will not interfere with your independence. Because if He did, then love could not exist." Love could not exist unless independence existed. Because love is voluntary. You can't force someone to love you. That's not possible. I have a third question. Yeah. So Prabhupada said that in the material world, we just have a causeless unwillingness. Even though we may also have a desire no that's not our that's not it causeless by uncauseless willingness it means that the material nature covering the soul distorts that desire to serve and covers it and perverts it so that we have a causeless unwilling to serve Krishna but we don't it's, we have some desires to serve our own senses you know our boss or some other persons or whatever but we is, we're talking about the service to Lord, the causeless uh, unwillingness to serve the Lord. The, the, there, is a lo there is a desire to serve the Lord in the heart of every living entity that never gets lost completely, but it just gets covered. In other words, in other words, faith is actually love for Krishna filtered through the material senses and mind and perverted by that reflection, by that substances, material substances, into faith in material things, in material objects, in material relationships, material possessions, even our own bodies. And the influence of those, you know, uh, are so strong that we, we, we have a causeless unwillingness to serve the Lord. And as long as we have that, then we can stay in this world as long as you want. And he'll never interfere. But sometimes he does. If you, if you somehow or other you come in contact with a pure devotee <clears throat> and do something that that pure devotee likes, then you can get, you can get, a, you know, what's the word, honorary degree? Or you can get, because we shouldn't, <laughs> Prabhupada used to say, we shouldn't, you know, bank on getting an honorary degree. We have to, from ourselves, we have to, you know, earn it. But it's so, Lord Chaitanya has made it so simple. You know, we just have to chant Hare Krishna and be with devotees and serve devotees without offense. We do have to give up envy and we have to give up uh, and we have to be honest. These are the two qualities that in the very beginning of the Bhagavatam said, if you read the Bhagavatam without envy and honestly, then you will see Krishna in the pages of the Bhagavatam. That's the test of the quality of our devotion, of our willingness. That was awesome. Hare Krishna. Yes, Pranata. Srila Prabhupada breaks down Pavarga. Oh, you got the, you, you got the, uh, go ahead. It's 1843, the text. Are and you going to read it for us? Can you read it for us? Well, he says, Pa means hard labor. Hmm. Pa means so hard that he foams at the mouth. Ah, pa, pa. Ba means frustration. He's frustrated. Ba means fearfulness. 
and ma means mrityu or death. There you go. And that's very the good. five kinds of misery. Thank you very much. See, you're off the hook now. You don't have to do the research. Oh, I see. Okay. Got a little competition going on here. <laughs> nice. Healthy competition. Very nice. Oh, one more question. Hmm. This is from Rati. Rati Manjari. Haribo Rati. Dear Srila Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. If I understand correctly, Srila Prabhupada stated tonight that we should not pray to be going back to Godhead. But I am not feeling humble enough not to pray for this benediction. What is the best thing for me to do? Pray to go back to Godhead. <laughs> You know, because <clears throat> that idea means that we've already attained pure devotional service and therefore there's no question of us going back to Godhead because we already are back to Godhead. And that we also read that tonight. Yeah. yeah. When, when you're here in a place where the whole, with devotees who want to hear <clears throat> or hearing about the glories of the Lord, you're in the spiritual world. And therefore, I mean, honestly, I'm just being, you know, when we're really, when we're really hearing nicely, and it, where's the desire to go anywhere, to do anything? It's, that it's, it just goes away. And that's what it means. That's the, that's the phenomenon of being in the spiritual world. Yes. Yes. I have a problem with whenever I feel that way, my next thought is like, oh, I don't want it to go away. But it's like, it's not gone yet, but I'm anxious about it going away. Well, I mean, that could be just, you know, ignorance, or it could be a symptom of separation. Because there is a, there is a, 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 a kind of separation that anticipates the separation before it happens. In the material world, it's it's like it's like it, it's reflected in the idea that the, the absence makes the heart grow fonder. And if one's really attached, then you know, then the person may think. Oh, this person could go away at any moment, so therefore, I'm going to be mad at him or mad or whatever, you know, or f feel that feeling. But but when devotees are actually hearing and chanting together, they feel happy. The, the, the happiness that we feel is uh, beyond the beyond, you know. Of course, you know, sometimes we go out the door and then Maya comes crashing in on us, you know. But the the, the idea is to keep on hearing and chanting like this so that we can keep that feeling, we can keep that, at least the remembrance of that feeling. So you want to come back for more, and here we are. This is the family. It's family business. This is our family business. Hear and chant and distribute our family business. And for that, I don't know if you can tell, but my, my voice is also starting to go. And I had a 52-page reading this morning, which is, we're getting back into the groove after all the different things that happened. So uh, I want to, I have to stop now. Thank you very much, Rati. Uh, I want you to know that Rati, for Gopanim, she went out and did Harinam through the streets of, of uh, Amsterdam, and the weather was not so nice, but they did it anyway, and it was ecstatic. Okay, thank you so much everyone. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. Yeah. The Pachetas prayers to Lord Vishnu Ki Jai. Yeah. Lord Vishnu's benedictions on the Pachetas Ki Jai. Yeah. Gaur Premanandi, we'll see you tomorrow night at 6.30, same place, same time. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.